and welcome to the first episode of my new series, Project T80. Right now, I expect you're asking one of two questions. Firstly, I have so many projects started, am I going to finish any of them? Secondly, what's a T80? To answer the first question, I always have multiple projects running. It keeps me from getting stale on one build, or stuck in a cul-de-sac, stewing over a problem and getting disheartened. Often coming away from a build is healthy, allowing me to return to it afresh. It's a bit different being a YouTuber, as I mustn't let down my subscribers. But don't worry, that won't happen. I bet I'm not the only model maker to have more than one project on the go at once. This should be a quick three-part series, so you can rest assured my other builds won't suffer. In this case I saw the T80 on a TV program, and thought I must make a model of that, for a couple of reasons. But more on that later. Now, what's a T80? Well, it has absolutely nothing to do with the Terminator or Arnold Schwarzenegger. In fact, it has more to do with my mouse tank. Way back in the 1930s, the German Reich heavily subsidised Auto Union and Mercedes-Benz to build racing cars competing at the highest level of motorsport. One of the leading designers at the time was Ferdinand Porsche, who worked for Auto Union. Over the years, the Silver Arrows, as they were known, became more and more dominant. Drivers such as Manfred von Brausic, Bernd Rosemeyer and Rudolf Caracciola soon became celebrities racing these iconic cars. This dominance led to the manufacturers seeking new challenges, further raising the profile of the German Reich. The two manufacturers began building cars for outright speed, to set new world records. These records were to be set on public roads in Germany, specifically the Autobahns. This network of roads not only improved German infrastructure, but provided a useful means of transporting troops and armour across the country, should there be a war. A straight 10 km stretch of autobahn was built just south of Dessau. Known as the dessau Rennstecker, it had bridges with no piers, and was specifically built for these record-breaking cars. In 1938, Rudolf Caracciola set a new speed record in the Mercedes W125 Rekordwagen of 268.9 miles an hour, a record that stood for decades. Many of these record cars had been adapted from racing cars, but a ground-up record car had never been built. In 1937, racing driver Hans Stuck convinced Mercedes-Benz to build a car specifically for record attempts. To design this new car, they sought out Ferdinand Porsche. This new car was intended not only to break the record on public roads, but also take on the absolute land speed record. This new car was the Mercedes T80, a nicknamed Schwarzer Vogel, or Blackbird, by Hitler. The T80 was completed in 1939, and was an incredible machine. At over 8 metres long, it had 6 wheels, and weighed over 2.7 tonnes. It was powered by a Daimler-Benz DB603 inverted V12, with a capacity of 44.5 litres. This was closely related to the DB601, which would power the Schmidt BF109s a few months later in the Battle of Britain. The T80 was intended to be painted in national markings as a propaganda tool for its record attempt in January 1940 but the outbreak of the Second World War cancelled the event. As war raged across Europe, the T-80 was moved into storage and survived the war. Today it's on permanent display at the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Stuttgart. I had always wanted to get into making car models, and I thought the T-80 would make a great starting point. So, my first decision was what scale to make the T-80. I looked at all the obvious car scales and decided to go for 1 to 18. I found some plans online, and imported them into my 3D modelling software. I had to model the T80 using a technique I'd never used before, but always wanted to learn, called polygon modelling. This involves starting with a small square, and progressively adding to it to form a mesh, in the basic shape of the subject. I can edit the faces, edges and points that make up the mesh, to recreate the surface of the T80. I've never done this before, but after a while it became very therapeutic, and actually quite easy once I got the hang of it. Of course this mesh is only half the car, and it's pretty rough, but there is a solution to that. To create both sides, the mesh is placed within a symmetry tool. This exactly duplicates and mirrors the mesh. Then this is placed within a subdivision tool. This basically increases the resolution of the mesh, making the faceted form much smoother. 
The difference is spectacular. I now have a beautifully streamlined 3D model, as you can see from these rendered images. The various processes have made the 3D model totally smooth, eliminating all of the original facets. The finished model won't be this shiny, it'll be painted as per the silver arrows back in the day, but more on that another time. It does look pretty cool though. Of course the body wasn't the only part of the car I had to design, there's also the chassis and wheels. To fit the body on the 3D printer, I divided it into three sections. This is the largest part, the centre section, which takes 36 hours to print. The chassis I designed in two parts, and made them fit together with a decent positive join. Like most of the parts, I printed the chassis in my favourite material, ABS. The main parts of the wheels and tyres were printed as fronts and backs, allowing me to accurately maintain the tyre profile. The outer rings are printed to increase the surface area of the parts, helping them stick better to the print bed. They come away very easily. The back surface is quite rough, where the tyres were printed into the glue on the print bed. You can even see the track of the print nozzle. But that's all OK. These are the mating surfaces that will be glued together to recreate the tyre. The waste ABS is destined for the bin. Now, let's have a look at the spokes. I printed the spokes in relief as dummy units, as only a small part of the wheel is visible below the bodywork of the T80. These were printed on my resin printer, and come out at a much higher resolution than the ABS parts. I used nail cutters to cut away the brittle support material. As you can see, this is pretty messy, but the quality of the printed part is fantastic. The back face is really rough, but I'm not worried, it'll easily stand down. With a bit of luck, the spoke unit should fit in the tyre. It still needs a bit of cleaning up, but I reckon it'll be fine. Now, let's see how the body is printed. I've never designed or 3D printed anything like this before, and was amazed at the results I got. Sure, there are layer lines, but I can easily sand them down and fill them. I have a plan for that. To be honest, I was astonished at the quality of the results I got from my Ultimaker 3D printer. I started cleaning up the chassis print, which came out well. I hate 3D printing automatic support structure, and try and design without the need for it. Most of the time it works out OK, but the internal parts of the chassis fixing are a bit messy. I'll clean them up, but they won't be seen. They'll be fine. Now, let's make a start on the bodywork. I expect you'd like to see the parts all together. I designed all the parts to have a flat base. This was to help them stick to the 3D printer's build plate. These have to be cut away and the internal structure removed. For the centre section, I added a couple of plates to support the wings. These were also cut away with my tin snips. The ABS that I'm removing is about 1mm thick. The shell of the part is about 2.8mm thick so it should be strong enough. Some areas are pretty difficult to cut out, but eventually the cutters win the fight. And here you are, the three body parts are together for the first time. I hope you agree, this is a great looking vehicle. I'm delighted with the progress I've made so far. In the next episode I'll be cleaning up all the parts, and hopefully have everything assembled. The issue of the cockpit still has to be resolved, 
but I have plans for that. Once again, the 3D printers will come to the rescue, as I also add the exhausts. There are still a few issues to sort out, but the T80 has been a great project to learn and develop a new technique, which I can use on other projects. In the final episode, I'll get it into paint. I hope you find Project T80 interesting and enjoyed seeing the progress. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more from Staples and Vine. If you have any questions about the T80, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.